Welcome to the carnewscafe.com podcast. Hi everyone, this is Adam Imada Hamp and this is the Car News Cafe podcast number 12. You can check us out on Twitter at Car News Cafe. Please tweet us any questions, comments, or fun facts. You can also check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash Car News Cafe online. We also have a Google Plus community which I hope you all check out. Hello, everybody. This is Aaron with carnewscafe.com. I think Adam covered all the bases. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. This is Nicholas Zart signing in for Car News Cafe. And indeed, you cannot like us on Google+. Plus. You can only follow us on Google+. Plus, But do like us on LinkedIn, do like us on Facebook, and do follow us on uh, Twitter. That would be fun. We've got a lot of things to talk about today, so let's get going. This week, we have a few things we want to talk about. Elia Motors seems to be less and less likely that they're going to actually build any cars. Nissan has some driverless cars, and the CNC Ford van of awesomeness for the week. Kia's hamsters have gotten a bit of an update and lost some weight, and I'm going to talk about taking the Amtrak train from Baltimore to Philly and back. We're going to also talk about the Baltimore Grand Prix, which is happening right here in Baltimore this weekend, starting today. It seems Elio Motors is getting to the point where they are less and less likely that they will ever actually reach production with their cars. Well, this is just a quick change. All that's really happened is the Caddo commissioners voted to basically give Elio the money to buy their plant in a roundabout way. And one of the commissioners that dissented on that vote She has taken it to court, and the commission has agreed to hold off on doing anything until the court makes a decision. That may put Elio in jeopardy because Elio is supposed to have had the money to pay for this by September 4th, and as we all know, that is the middle of next week. So that's really all there is to this update, but it's an important one because it may just shut down the whole thing just because of the timing. Well, it's really too bad about Elio because if you think about it, the whole revolution of the electric vehicles, we had a lot of um, three-wheelers that came out in the beginning. You know, if you remember Aptera and everything, and this is yet another three-wheeler that uh, seems to be falling by the wayside again. One little company that I'm looking into, that I've been looking into since day one, was it is Lit Motors. I don't know if you've seen that little thing. It's basically sort of a two-wheeler motorcycle inside a very aerodynamic cover, and it has two little tiny wheels that come out and stabilizes the vehicle, I guess I should say, at standstill. But it has a very smart and intelligent um, gyroscopic system that keeps it well balanced at all time. Anyway, long story short, which is almost impossible with me, I will be going up to Fremont to test drive a Model S pretty soon, and I was thinking I should just uh, go and uh, check out these guys. So, Elio, I hope you can find a way to do it right, uh, because another another three-wheeler EV that goes down by the wayside, that's not, that's not a lot of fun. That's not what we need to hear. The thing that set me off on this, because I was very pro-Elio, I really like their car, but the problem that I saw was as soon as they said that they had to have the local government there front them $10 million to buy a plant. I was like, you know, if you're buying a physical facility, you would think that, you know, if you were a viable startup, that there would be banks or whoever else throwing money at you to buy that sort of thing to get you going. So it just seemed hokey to me that they were asking for a $10 million handout, basically, when they're still going to need $200 million after that to start building this car. I just wonder, where's that $200 million going to come from? So anyway, that's the uh, update this week on Elio. It's kind of an ongoing saga, as it were. Yeah, I think what a lot of people don't realize with car startups and building cars is that a lot of things need to align right for a company to successfully launch and build a car. There needs to be ample funding. They need to have a good engineering team. And they also need to have a good marketing team to market the car, so it will sell. But Elio Motors doesn't have the first step of even getting funding to find a plant. Hey, speaking of Nissan Leafs, Adam, they drive themselves now. Segway. Seems Google's now not the only player in the driverless car space, as Nissan has been working on their own driverless technologies with the Nissan Leaf. They actually opened up a lab in Silicon Valley to work on technologies just like this, which obviously was a smart move by Nissan. Nissan Renault, actually. The Silicon Valley facility, I think, is only Nissan's, but they do have a couple of things that they're doing with Renault. This, I don't believe they're doing with them, but 
one of the big things that you're seeing as far as press releases and, and information happening at that Silicon Valley facility is these cool little kind of, they look like, you remember the Weebles? You remember those from when we were kids? The Weebles wobble wobble, but they don't fall down. Go Weebles! Go Weebles! You remember those? They have these little robots that look exactly like them. And they're using them as these little tests on these little tracks to basically be tiny little self-driving cars. And then they mimic fish and bee and other, other animal behavior to learn how to interact with one another. And that's part of the software development they're doing for the artificial intelligence to make these driverless cars. It's pretty cool. There's a few videos of it. We have a couple of them on, on our channel. So if I hear you well, um, Aaron, you're saying the North Koreans are uh, using hamsters and the Japanese are using little robots, right? Yeah, pretty much, except the hamsters are mostly CGI and dudes in suits. <laughs> Whereas the little Japanese robots actually do stuff. I have to say, I'm, I'm really happy. I haven't had TV in a decade now, in 10 years, and I'm so blissfully unaware of these things, and I'm very happy because all I see are little pictures here and there, and I kind of look at it and go, huh, another marketing campaign. So I'm glad you guys are telling me that the hamsters are a little bit shorter, smaller, cuter, but yeah, right, moving on. I have YouTube and Netflix. So I keep up with everything. <laughs> when I wrote this article about the hamsters, there were only two things that I wanted to talk about. One was how stupid a uh, marketing mascot these hamsters are. And the other one was I wanted to use the phrase Miley Cyrus hoedown. That was it. That was all I wanted. <laughs> Well, personally, I don't think the Kia hamsters are that good of a marketing campaign anyway, so <laughs> them dropping a couple of pounds is not concerning to me. Adam wants to talk about this awesome red van that we designed. All right, so apparently there's some big news on the site this week about the Ford Transit Connect van. Ford is trying to promote their commercial line a little more, so they have a generator on their w website where you can customize your Ford Transit Connect van. So that's basically what we did. We put the Car News Cafe logo on. And if you guys want to check it out, we'll link up in the show notes to it. Yep, and we were very careful to choose the right vehicle because it needed to be red because it's faster. And we wanted the Transit because Nicholas wants to have all that eco-friendly BS. And so, you know, the Transit Connect comes in all those different kinds of powertrains with natural gas and hybrids and whatnot. And our pictures are emblazoned across the hood of the thing. I mean, what more could you ask for? <laughs> Yeah, check out that story because um, I'm going to be sending the van to Ford, or at least a picture to Ford, and I want to see if they're willing to give us one with Car News Cafe on it. So if you ever see that van driving around town, that's us, and we'll film you and we'll talk about you. Well, the cool thing is that this van, uh, the Transit Connect, one of the reasons that we chose the van was because... Nicholas insisted that we have alternative powertrains, and the Transit Connect comes in several, but the Transit Connect is not a hybrid supercar, is it, Nicholas? Although it is not a hybrid supercar, I just have to say one quick thing. I really like the Transit Connect, and I like the original one because it's so European geeky in its form, and I love it, and I thought it was great. I test drove the original electric one, and it was great. But let's get to serious business here. So hybrids have been around for a long time now. They've been around for well over a decade. About a few years ago, Toyota finally started making money and, and, and profits on its Prius. Yay. But really, who cares? Seriously, let's be serious about it. And now, finally, hybrids are starting to show some testosterone. So we have a Ferrari, after years of denying any notions of an electric motor inside a Ferrari, finally comes out with LaFerrari. But I have to say one thing. We should have seen it coming, right? Because in 2009, they dropped no less than six patent on, on a hybrid, uh, different types of hybrid powertrains. And of course, well, we all know about Porsche's 918 plug-in hybrid. Super fantastic. Did you, by the way, catch the whole thing on 918? It will be launched on the 18th of September, 918. It will be launched for $918,000, which it won't, by the way. And only 918 of them will be main. Great idea. So what can top all of this? McLaren's P1 on top of it. So I think it's fantastic because after almost a decade and a half now of yawn, boring, hum-hum, hybrids, now we finally have the big boys stepping into. So the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because a lot of the uh, social media circles are talking about how a Ferrari is going to make an electric car. Well, 
Maybe, maybe not, but it's not going to happen for another uh, 7 to 10 years. And Ferrari is still saying, no way, Jose, we will not make an electric car. We don't have any desires. And actually, uh, uh, Luca de Montezolemo, did I say that right? Just said again how there is no future with electric, um, electric cars. By the way, does that remind you of Audi a few years ago? It sure does with me. So, yes, they will make electric cars at some point. Yes, they said they would never make hybrids. Yes, they said electric motors would never go into their cars. Well, there it is. It is, and it is coming, and it will be happening, but just not now. So leave it alone. They're, hybrid, they're, they're exotic makers. That's all they do is gasoline engines. They're finally accepting electric motors. Give them some time. Well, what's interesting about the uh, La Ferrari is that uh, it, not just Ferrari is now building a hybrid supercar. We have Porsche, McLaren, and Lamborghini are basically coming out with the same types of hybrid supercars. I mean, they're going about it in different ways, but they all are definitely now sort of getting on board with the hybrid and electric train, so to speak. It's interesting because I did forget to mention Lamborghini. I wasn't sure exactly where they were going with it. And I thought with Lamborghini's and Audi's close relationship, I wasn't sure if the e-tron was going to bleed into Lamborghini. So uh, I didn't mention it. I should probably revisit that a little bit. But obviously, when we think of performance, electric motor pretty much has a lot of performance, especially over a, a regular gasoline engine. I mean, 100% torque as soon as it spins. What else can you do better than that? How much better does it get than 100% torque as soon as it spins? Talk about exotics. Hybrids are getting some testicular fortitude. Speaking of the hybrid train, Adam, I hear you took the train and it was marginally better than driving. Yay, Adam took the train. We're so proud of him. Yeah, so I went up to Philadelphia about, I think, a week and a half to two weeks ago. And I had considered driving up to Philadelphia, but the thing is, is that parking in the city would have run me about 25, 30, maybe more per day. And I needed to stay there for at least two to three days. You know, on top of gas and the amount of time it I was going to drive, I looked at the train schedule and how much it would have cost, and it was about uh, 40, 46, I think, each way. So I spent about $80, $85 about to get from Baltimore to Philly and Philly and back. But the thing is that Amtrak is really, really convenient for the Northeast Did you Corridor. Meet any ladies? It only took about over a little over an hour. You know, you can sleep on the train. The seats are bigger, more comfortable than taking a bus or an airplane. And you can change. I didn't know this, but you can change your plans really easily. So if you call them 24 hours before, you can get a full refund. If it's within 24 hours, uh, they give you an option of a credit if the pricing is lower or they deduct 10% from the ticket price. No, this drives me crazy because we don't have any good Amtrak, what is it, route over here. I wanted to go one day from Los Angeles to San Francisco. Now check this out. You start in Los Angeles, but you take a two hour bus drive to guess where? Oh, Bakersfield, middle of nowhere. Then you take the train to guess where? Oakland. And then guess what? You either have an hour bus ride into San Francisco or another train that goes to San Francisco. So you guys on the East Coast are much luckier. And so I can't wait for either Elon Musk's Hyperloop train or, or the fast train over here. But yeah, indeed, you guys are lucky. By the way, trains are wonderful because it's all a social thing here, too. Who is John Galt? It's all the eastern seaboard politicians that are always pushing for the subsidies for Amtrak. That's why they have all the uh, trains over there. You guys over there in California, I don't know why you don't have a lot of trains because you guys are always... Of course, California, you like to talk about dreamy stuff. So you, you have all these people talking about, oh, let's let's make this bullet train that does this, that, and the other. And then, you know, they, they dump several million dollars of it into it and then they never actually do it well aaron we don't have a lot of trains because we have a lot of petroleum companies because uh -huh. <laughs> just three or four miles from my house the train uh one of the main train tracks that runs across the country parallels i-80 and in order for me to get on a, a passenger train 
I still have to drive all the way to Denver. They don't even have one that comes up here, even to Cheyenne. So I either have to go all the way down to Denver or all the way up to Casper. If I go up to Casper, they're still going to take me down to Denver on that passenger train anyway. So, <laughs> and, you know, so no matter what I do to get on a train, I'm going to be driving for three hours. And the only reason I know this is because I have a friend who just went back home. He lives in Bakersfield, and he took the train both ways. And he was like, I can't believe how totally inconvenient this is. It has like a hundred stops along the way and it takes like 50 hours or whatever. And I was like, holy crap, that's horrible. By the way, you know what the final date of the bullet train is? I think it's, uh, it's supposed to be uh, 2025, so that means easily 2030, 2035. By then, we'll have maglevs, we'll have uh, Star Trek uh, matter antimatter systems, and, well, EVs will be everywhere. So it's going to be interesting to see how the train, the train actually competes with all of that. And I think I read somewhere that uh, only uh, maybe 10% of the lines are actually passenger lines. The rest is just freight, freight, freight. Yeah, almost all of it is freight. Every train that comes by here is freight. Well, the reason most trains are freight is, I believe, per the amount of energy that it takes to move a train, you get the most value for your money. Yeah, but if you sit down and do the rest of the math, it doesn't really work out that great. Trains are actually one of the most efficient ways of moving anything because there's very little friction. It's metal on metal. The only time a train actually uses a lot of power is starting up. But once it is rolling, it rolls. So it's, it is one of the most efficient ways of doing it. And for hauling heavy things, it's really great. But even for passengers, it's still very convenient. In fact, if you look at the European uh, or even Japanese fast bullet trains, what they do is they uh, accelerate going down. So they go slightly over 300, 350 kilometers an hour. And then they kind of coast up hills. So they uh, regen going back down. And then they coast back up going back up. So, it, it, you know, it makes a lot of sense, makes a heck of a lot of sense. But, you know, hey, when you have petroleum companies who subsidize uh, highways and closing down stations, there you go. That's what happens uh, decades later. And then I will point out one little detail. How did they get rid of the trains? Government. Actually, that's an interesting thing you said, Nicholas, because a lot of people don't realize that California actually used to have a very good train system. And if anyone's seen Who Framed Roger Rabbit, that movie is actually about the, I think, oil companies, or I forget who it was, but it's basically about them trying to take out the trains and make it so that more people are driving cars, which is exactly how it is in Southern California now. That's that's exactly true. There was the uh, the famous red line everybody talks about actually used to go about two miles from here, and it would go from downtown L.A. all the way down to Long Beach, all the way down to Huntington Beach, right? So people would hop on, spend a day at the beach, and then come back. There's still, by the way, one little red trolley car in Seal Beach, somewhere in the middle of Seal Beach. And you can see it. You can go in there. It's a museum. It talks about it. And I don't care who framed Roger Rabbit. I just want to know why they took it out. They took those trains out. I don't know. Maybe they didn't make any money or uh, maybe the companies that wanted to get rid of the trains success lobbied the only entity that has a monopoly on violence. That's my anti-government sentiment for the day. Yeah, so this uh, weekend, the Baltimore Grand Prix is rolling into Baltimore, I guess. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be attending as I'm going to be leaving town for a wedding. But if anyone's within the Mid-Atlantic, yes, I'm not getting married. Thank God. Sounds like uh, Adam has his priority sorted out, right? Huh. Adam Yamada available. And by the way... Just so that you guys know, he did not invite us. He's telling this at the very last minute, and he's going to be drinking and fornicating. Ha! Huh. Jesus, some people have the best life. Adam Yamada, the only one of us that's single. Yes, he's still available, ladies. That means you got to run out and register that .net, .com, and whatnot on that then. Adam Yamada, ham, not married, .com. So, guys, I just finished my uh, seventh day uh, with the uh, Honda Fit EV, and I have to say, again, pretty much like the CRZ, I was uh, I was very impressed with the car because I kind of approached it thinking, ah, eh, it's just a compliance car. What can they do about it, really? It's actually really good. It's definitely a, a second generation electric car, but it really was the first car I test drove that didn't have me running for a plug everywhere I stopped. We did a few things. We, you know, did highway, did a lot of things like that. We went from Long Beach to um, Beverly Hills, which is about a you know 32 mile drive, and we could have easily come back because this car pretty much gives you about 100 miles if you if you don't drive too too fast. 
charged somewhere um, in Westwood, had fun. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to be on TV. I'm going to be on National Geographic. Um, I was ordering a sandwich from someone who did not speak a word of English. That was very interesting. And you know me, I can't turn down a camera. But the Honda Fit EV Do, was a lot of fun. Are they bringing a hot girl with the car? It was kind of sad letting it go yesterday. But uh, today, I'm getting <laughs> something say, Does she come very strange for an EV guy. I'm getting the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution. The reason why is because, well, how far can you push that damn technology? Seriously, the Lancer Evolution is a wonderful car. I get to test drive the uh, safety uh, vehicle at Pike Speak, and um, it made me think that we, we need to take a closer look at these cars because they won't exist much longer with only a gasoline engine. Hint, hint, you know what I'm driving at? That the next generations are going to be hybrids. If, after all, Ferrari and all these guys are doing that, then Mitsubishi, Nissan will do that. So imagine a GTR, a hybrid GTR. Mmm, I am. So I will be test driving the uh, Lens Revolution for an entire week, and I'm going to speculate how electrified it will be. Well, I'm a bit jealous that you're going to be test driving a Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution, but I don't think that your theory of gasoline engines not being around for much longer is accurate, unfortunately. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold your horses here. I didn't say it was the end of the gasoline engine. I said we've pushed it about as far as we could, and I'm thinking here specifically Mazda, which, by the way, I'm going to get to test drive the following weeks, the Skyactiv. I think we've pushed that about as far as it can go. You probably can do a few more things, but no matter how you look at it, Look at Ferrari, McLaren, all these guys. The electric motor is coming, has been coming, will be coming, will make its way into these performance cars because so far we've only seen it on Priuses and Civics and cars like that. Now the high-end exotics are using them. So now you're going to see that middle segment, you know, the evolutions to the GTRs, they will have to bring in electric motors. So I'm not saying it's the end of the gasoline engines by any means, but... Electric motors are going to come in. They're going to help out these um, gasoline engines become even more efficient. And yeah, at some point, it, you know, they will be replaced, as well as electric motors will be replaced at some point. It's just the way it is. Get over it. Adam Yamada, I'm totally available.net. I guess that is a fair assumption that more resources will be going into electric motors and different technologies going forward. Adam's hookup.tv. It is more than an assumption. It is the truth. The reality of things is that the electric motor will come in the car and uh, say goodbye to the gasoline engine. Thank you. By the way, it might be very obvious that um, my native language is not English. It is French. And so and that was I my attempt this, at having a French have accent. Inspector I, Clouseau no, picture. I have one. It's just I'm oh, trying to cover it. Because French. when I went through high school, the last thing you wanted to be known is um, as the French guy. Although it was really cool because when I got to the States, the big song à la mode was Voulez-vous coucher avec moi ce soir? So here's the 13-year-old kid walking around with girls going, Would you want to go sleep with me? And I'm thinking, wow, this country is really freaking cool. And then it turned out that they really didn't mean it, which was a big bummer. A really big letdown. If nothing else, Nicholas is deep. He is a deep, deep, deep soul. Deep soul. I just have one thing to say. Aaron is a silly knigget. And Adam, his mother smells of elderberry. <laughs> yeah, except you're supposed to do it in a, a French accent. Only it's a crappy French accent because it's Monty Python. It's like a Welsh French accent. <laughs> this is Adam Yamanahamp signing off for the Car News Cafe podcast. If you have questions, comments, whatever, you just want to talk to us, please tweet us at Car News Cafe on Twitter. You can also check us out on Facebook. Again, the URL is facebook.com slash car news cafe online. He is so much better. I couldn't do it like that. I'm just going to say this is Nicholas Zart signing off for Car News Cafe. Go to Facebook. I hope you remember what Adam said. Just like us. Go to Twitter. Follow us. And LinkedIn, we're not as active, but we're getting active there. And, of course, on Google+, Plus, if you like uh, technology, electric cars, um, I'm pretty much always there. Now, so long, suckers. I'm jumping in the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo. And this is Aaron Turpin from CarNewsCafe.com. And if you are watching this on YouTube, we have a pretty good YouTube channel. We put a lot of stuff up there. And these podcasts are eventually made into YouTube videos. And if you're watching this right now, then you are seeing links to all of our social media. And you're, you've been watching screen captures of the stories that we're talking about and photos of the vehicles that we're bringing up. 
as well as fun little outtakes and other things that we do while we're recording this, hitting camera uh, captures and taking video of ourselves. So again, this is Aaron Turpin, carnewscafe.com. Have a good week. I just wanted to yap a little bit because I have nothing much to say. The weebles wobble wobble, but they don't fall down. Go weebles! Go weebles! (laughs) Go weebles!